Hello lads, welcome back to the Q&A. First question from Wandering Guy. Greetings, Golden One. I have noticed that you have some epic helmets on your bookshelf, and I've also seen some truly glorious pictures of you wearing different historical helmets. As someone who is considering to start collecting replicas of various historical helmets, armors, swords, etc., may I ask where you've gotten your helmets from? Now, first and foremost, these uh, you see in the epic pictures are, um, they were supplied by the photographers, so they are not actually mine, but once on the bookshelf, I can uh, link from um, the store where I bought them from in uh, in the comment section. And uh, yeah, moving on with the question. Also, do you have any personal favorites among helmets, etc. from history? Some of my favorite helmets are the helmets found at Valsjärde and, and Germanby. And among swords, I personally find sabers to be an elegant weapon. Thank you for your glorious work. And thank you for your support. I really like the Corinthian Hellenic helmets. And I also like the Valsjärde Viking helmets, or not Viking helmets, but uh, Nordic helmets. Uh, so these two, obviously something I do not like, and what I never ever want to see is these um, typical Viking helmets uh, with horns. These really silly ones, so um, that is absolutely absolutely blasphemous, if anything. But to answer the question in regards to helmet, at least the uh, Corinthian helms and also the uh, Valsjärde style Nordic helms. In regards to swords etc I don't have any particular preference there. Obviously a uh, massive claymore is always testosterone. So yeah that's my answer to that question. Great Lion of Sverige, it has been interesting of late to see how the issue of South American immigration to the United States has been handled by Trump. He has been good to his word on some things but not all. How do you think he should handle the illegal caravan should it reach the border in light of the outrage leveled against his presidency. Uh, well, I've said a few things about Trump in the past and uh, I say the same thing now. He obviously has to contend with a lot of different factions within the United States. So he isn't, um, he might have a lot of power, but he is not the only one in the United States that has uh, a lot of power. He has to contend with the deep state. So even if he has promised a wall, it is still a very rocky road to actually getting said wall. So obviously it can't come as a surprise to anyone who has an understanding of how the states in the West works. Uh, the president and the people who elected him, they are not the ultimate rulers. The ultimate rulers are the people behind the scenes. Um, and I'm not even talking about any particular ethnic group here. I'm talking about many different interests, many different uh, factions that are vying for control and who are obviously looking out for their own uh, interests. So um, that is my take on uh, Donald Trump and everything he does. Uh, he needs to give some to get some. Um, hopefully he has given enough to uh, at least the Israel lobby to uh, be able to get some support in the um, native affairs, so to speak. So anyway, I don't know if that was a good answer or not, but uh, I think Trump is still good. He's uh, trying at least to um, to make America great again, but he has a lot of people against him. So uh, it's not easy, but I salute him for trying. And then obviously I don't endorse everything that he does, but uh, yet again, he isn't the sole ruler of America. So, uh, but anyway, I hope he gets the wall done at least. Next question. I recently bought the Byzantine two-headed eagle t-shirt from Legi Gloria. I was wondering, what does the black sun mean to you? The black sun, in my view, and this can obviously be up for interpretation because it's a, such an ancient symbol, but for me it's a reawakening or uh, enlightenment or rebirth. So that is why I have it there. And obviously the Byzantine Eagle stands for European unity. So the connection of the Byzantine Eagle with the Black Sun stands for both European unity and for uh, enlightenment or uh, revival or reawakening. Next question. Great Lion of Bubonic Proportions. Uh, thank you. A most kind compliment. Who in your humble view is the most glorious based and high thumus Roman emperor of all time? Not including Martin Septim, as he turned into a dragon god, and that's hardly sporting. Uh, so Martin Septim is um, an emperor in Oblivion, so the game before Skyrim. Uh, great game, by the way. Um, I would probably say Marcus Aurelius, just because of his reign. Uh, relatively peaceful, um, and he was on the 
on the throne or in the position of emperor for quite some time and he and he wrote his uh, meditations uh, which has to count for something he tried to live in accord with higher ideals um, as should be done by someone who has the ultimate power uh, so he tried to be the best possible man he could be uh, and the meditations that was notes to himself actually so it wasn't really a guideline for others it was a guideline for himself but i think it's really impressive that an emperor who is um yeah the most powerful human on earth still takes that responsibility that he needs to be accountable to something or someone and that is his own guidelines so um i would probably say uh, marcus aurelius just because of that and based upon the um the reign of his empire and um, after him there was a uh, number of really bad emperors and that's obviously not um, something that can be admired so uh, yeah last question greetings northern brother i recently partially dislocated my shoulder while practicing wrestling i'm slowly getting back to weights but it will take a few months until full recovery i'm currently focusing on light weights to avoid pain and high reps also trying to include isolations exercises do you have any training advice to give to any of your loyal legioners who got injured during battle. Any advice from you would be highly appreciated. Respectful regards. Uh, well, basically, what you are doing now is the correct way to go about it. So, uh, definitely, just lightweights. As soon as you feel even the slightest pain, just decrease the weights even more. Uh, focus fully on the range of motion on contact with the muscles and uh, just getting some blood flowing and keeping the body somewhat active until you recover so the basic rule here is to uh, is to try to train but as soon as you feel even the slightest uh, discomfort then um, lower the weight and also you can do a lot of walking as well if you want to um, get some sort of lighter cardio in so put in a podcast go for a walk of about 45 minutes or um, something like that so uh, But anyway, to conclude the answer there, uh, just uh, continue as you're doing. That's the correct way to go about it. So anyway, thank you for tuning in. XOXO, boom.